I'm Diane Rosignola with Nayer Eat. In conjunction with Nayer Eat's Reit Week, I'm here today with John Albright, President and CEO of Alpine Income Property Trust. John, how are you today? Excellent, thank you. Alpine Income Property Trust just announced the launch of its initial public offering in November 2019. What unique challenges is the company dealing with as a result of this amid the coronavirus pandemic? Thank you very much, uh, and I appreciate uh, again being here to uh, to answer some of these important questions. Uh, but you know, we had the um, the benefit of ha coming out, going public at a good time, and then obviously uh, investing in a very challenging time or before a very challenging time. So it, it's kind of we we had the the best of um, uh, or the best of one world and the worst of another. Uh, so we're lucky in that we got public in November in a very strong point of the market. Um, and then we started investing in the first quarter and we didn't have a lot of investments done until uh, COVID uh, came about or the pandemic. And so we're, we have the benefit of having a lot of dry powder right now, a very low leverage and a lot of cash on the balance sheet for our relatively small size. So we're, we're pivoting on our acquisition stance um, in this, uh, you know, condition of the, of the market and really uh, pivoting to a, a stronger uh, set of credits as we look um, for on acquisition. So it's, it's been a benefit to us in that we just got started in investing. Uh, we didn't get very far, so we have a very strong balance sheet and not a lot of tenants to, uh, to address versus, you know, having a larger uh, platform. Speaking of acquisitions, Alpine has acquired a number of properties over the past six months since its IPO. Can you talk a bit about those deals and how acquisitions in general have been impacted by COVID-19? So some of the acquisitions uh, on properties, for instance, we bought two 7-Elevens and a, uh, a BP uh, gas station. And those properties, as you can imagine, were open uh, during this whole pandemic and and actually uh, perform very well as, uh, as a source of necessary food items in these convenience stores. Uh, and then we have some properties, for instance, we bought an AMC theater and of course they've been closed down. Uh, and then a cons in, in Dallas, they have been actually open. And so it's just a, a tale of two worlds uh, as far as we have properties that have uh, performed very strongly uh, during this uh, pandemic and then some uh, who obviously uh, had their operations impacted. And lastly, how will the pandemic change the use of real estate in your sector? Well, I think everyone's going to be uh, very careful going forward, uh, at least we are, in the acquisitions we make. So we're going to be really concentrating on assets that have been open uh, during the pandemic businesses that were not affected and maybe uh, had uh, unfortunately benefited uh, because they were a necessity. So that's going to really change our outlook uh, in investing uh, the balance of our, our capital. And so, um, and so it's really changed our lens for sure uh, to uh, have more uh, prominent assets at higher grade credits and uh, assets that have been open during the pandemic. John, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. For more from REIT Week, visit REIT.com.